Hey guys, Movie Fan here to do another reaction video. Except this one's going to be a lot different from, you know, the stuff I've been doing so far. Because I will be talking about the Power Rangers costumes from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, from 1995. Now, this comes from a video that I discovered on YouTube last year. It was basically a little promo showing how they were going to be selling actual costumes from the movie at auction in London. I'm not making this up. This really happened, and it didn't do very well. I'm going to tell you that right now because, well, I'll get into that in a minute. Now, I checked it out because, you know, I'm a Power Rangers fan, as you all know, and I love the movie. So, of course, I had to check it out, and this is basically what I saw. Hey everyone, Norm from Tested here, once again at Prop Store for an upcoming auction. Brandon, there are a bunch of costumes you guys have for this upcoming auction, and you have a few of them yep. lined up here. Something from my childhood, the Power Rangers movie. Yes, yeah, loads of great costumes in this auction. Mm -hmm. uh, December 1st and 2nd, the auction's taking place. But the Power Rangers costumes are very cool because A, they're from the movie, as you just said, the 1995 film, mm -hmm. not the television show. The movie has far more interesting costumes. And B, I think this is oh, the first man. time Look the costumes that. in the movie have ever been on auction. Oh. Uh, so we're happy to have this set. And we they're do in very have the poor condition. Of all very six poor. Rangers. We just have a few of them out here today uh, and a few, few more of the helmets, but we do have the full costumes for all six of them. What's super interesting from the production standpoint is obviously for the TV show, they used a lot of the footage from Japan spliced mm -hmm. in with stuff they shot in America for the kids. Uh, but for the film, yeah, it was like a full on American production. They got to make all the costumes and mm -hmm. kind of redesign them, blow them up for the for the big screen. And so the aesthetics here, much more armored, which you could tell was influencing than yep. the, the reboot also. Yes, yeah, de definitely. I mean, I think they just, I'm sure they had more money for the film, right? Oh, yeah. And I think they wanted to bring a more interesting they look did. to the Rangers themselves. Oh, man, I'm look sure at that. they influenced Snacked. by other things that are going on in film at the time. And it's oh, like, man, hey, it's let's separating. get a cool sort of muscle suit, superhero type suit. Let's get some detail in there. And so, yeah, you know, these kind of start shipping. with the spandex. Oh, They're actually really interesting construction. And obviously there's some deterioration from time. You know, they, they, uh, some they, deterioration they some of their age, as you would expect from an artifact like this, but, but they start with the base spandex suit. And then that's actually treated with like a, a latex, like maybe they were dipped in latex or there's some sort of coating on that to give it a little bit more mm. of, a, of a glossy sheen. And then you've got these pieces of armor that have been installed that are, I think, cast mm. out of a urethane. Um, and, you know, you've, you've got various like uh, elements of, of vinyl in the cuffs where it's, you know, they created rib stitched areas. And obviously the Man. helmets are made of fiberglass and, and top the thing off. Um, and the helmets, I think, a bit more stylized also than their television counterparts, right? It's, it's yeah. so cool. You think about, like, you ask a kid of the 90s to draw a Power Ranger, and you think of, <laughs> you know, the diamonds and the, the silhouettes and yeah. obviously the, the color scheme. But like you said, there's so much layering in here in the cut and sew, you know, things like yes. the, the ribbing there and, and all of that. It's, you know, to, to make it look like some type of futuristic superhero. Uh, the helmets themselves. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the, the helmets? and? And how they were made and used? Yeah, yeah, the helmets are really neat. So let me see if I can just take this one off and, and show you. This is actually a one-off uh, from mm. a special shot in the film where the Yellow Ranger has lights. Yeah, most we remember that one. The Yellow Ranger does not have lights on the helmet. There's one. But shot look at the that. There's a chip right here. Mode, I think, that, that's just bad. They need to light up the scene, and for whatever reason, oh, and right on the here too. then has lights on the helmet. So this one actually had practical lights, and the way all these Ranger helmets are made, they're seamed at the sides, and they open up. This one, I think, has been taped, so I can't open it right now, but there's little hinges in there, like little uh, mm. ball and clasp hinges where a ball would snap into a socket to, to lock it in place, and you can see the wiring for the, the electronics. Yeah, um, there it is. And some of the padding in there. This one's just marked yellow. Mm -hmm. One of the really interesting things that we learned as we were researching these helmets, and I think you can see it on one of the DVD special features, is that they were considering having the Rangers wear their helmets without the eyepiece in and the mouthpiece in because they wanted to see the actors' faces. And, you know, they sort of talked about the fact that when you watch the show, you can sort of tell that maybe it's not yeah, the there they are. suits, maybe it's just the stunt performers. Yeah. Maybe we'd like to see the actors in the helmets. So they tried versions where the eye lens was removable and the mouthpiece was removable. 
But I think they said it just looked ridiculous. So. <laughs> you would still have that seam over the nose for it right there. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't think they wound up ever using any of that footage, but they did experiment with it. And like you can tell mm -hmm. with this one, the mouth is actually a separate piece in there that's that's cast in fiberglass. Oh. And that's been yeah. fixed in now. I think it's just hot glued in. But at one time they were experimenting with the idea that, you know, they would have these things installed with magnets and you'd be able to take the mouthpiece out mm -hmm. and uh, an actor, you know, a, a principal actor would wear a ranger helmet without the mouthpiece in so that's that's the let me just pause that for a second and you know that is true i have actually seen pictures from behind the scenes where they were trying that sort of thing but yeah obviously they didn't go through with that because of how it looked and they wouldn't come up with that until power rangers ninja storm and uh no he's quite incorrect i don't know about blu-rays but the dvds they don't have that footage they really don't let's move on yellow ranger um and whenever I take a look at this stuff, it, you know, it has the look good on the outside, but I also always try to empathize with the performers, whether it's mm. the stunt performer or the main actors and how yep. comfortable this thing is to wear. <laughs> they never are. The helmet, it's just glued in pieces of foam. I'm sure they added more foam, took things out to, mm -hmm. to make it feel snug, but they're pretty snug as, as helmets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be claustrophobic in there. No. And, um, you know, the suits themselves, I'm sure, were very, very hot with all these layers. Yeah, of they are, stuff. I'm sure. But I think when they design these things, especially in this era, they tend to go for form over function, should we say? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily the most comfortable thing to wear, but it looks cool. Yeah, totally. And you have the, the White Ranger, of course. So yep. even though there's the helmets here, it's the full costumes for mm -hmm. the whole set? It is, yeah. The, on the Red Ranger, the helmet's a replica, unfortunately. So that's the only one that doesn't have its original helmet. The other five Rangers all have original helmets. Most of them are 100% comp are, are complete costumes. Some of them are missing a couple of components here there. It's all detailed. Adam's missing his belt right there. Um, and the morphers are gone. Maybe another one of the helmets. Let's see if we can take a look at the blue helmet. This is honestly a big, just a big piece of my childhood. Like I remember seeing this on the big screen, waiting in line, yep. so excited to I watch know. Power Rangers. And this I is, did. you know, year, over 25 years later now, where that helmet has ended up. And it says right there, hero. So that's what we saw on screen. That's so cool. Uh, so you see it's well, basically you know, but, uh, just attached with a couple of pieces of elastic at the top of the head. They've built up all this yellow foam padding for actor comfort. Um, you can see some of the padding on the sides is actually colored and dyed blue. Of course. So, you know, maybe they thought that that would be visible through a seam at some it point. It could have. And then these little pole straps are basically designed for the actor to grab, pull down, and, and break the face away from the back of it. Hmm. And the, the mesh screen that's in the mouth here, that's actually been installed later. Someone put that in because the original mouthpiece was missing. Hmm. So that was put in just for display. That's not original to it. <laughs> no um, kidding. But the helmet itself is original. And, yeah. In a way, very simple, but also probably very part of the way to get removal in and out of the right? And you saw that labeling in there. So as we've seen costumes, and as you guys have had costumes come in through the warehouse, you know, modern labeling and inventory systems are very robust in terms mm. of what actor, what scene. And you know, when you find something like this that's gone through collectors' hands, is there more research that's needed to find out? The provenance of it and hmm. uh, where and screen matching it and how it was used and sometimes i mean something like this is very hard to screen match because all the suits yeah. would be so similar to them to each other sure um and obviously you have reasonable deterioration and, and <sighs> wear on them so it makes it tough to screen match but you know it is interesting and we do note in the catalog the various markings you know some some components are marked hero some are marked i believe some of the helmets say specifically hero dark working set and mm -hmm. that was a reference to a dark visor, so there were probably multiple shades of visors, some mm -hmm. dark, some light, maybe depending on whether they're filming at night or not, or whether it's an action scene or not. Um, some pieces are stunts, you know, sometimes the gloves or the boots mm -hmm. or even the bodysuits themselves will be marked stunts. Um, and again, all that's called out specifically in the description. So it is kind of a, a mix match, but all original pieces from that 1995 film. And it's all kind of archaeology that's done so that when you rewatch the film, you can have a better understanding of the production and, and recognize that stuff. Uh, speaking of costumes, though, plenty of other costumes, of course. You know, all right, we'll the stop there. Lots. Well, that's pretty much what I saw. And, you know, that was just a downright shame to see this like this. Because, you know, I grew up with Power Rangers and the movie was spectacular. And I know... These are probably doubles because, you know, they have more than one costume for each occasion. And rightfully so, because, you know, you got stunt doubles, you got the actors themselves. And, of course, it's going to be more than one stunt double because, you know, you can't have just one guy 
pretend to be the Red Ranger the whole time. You got to have at least a couple more because not everyone could do the backflips or the special moves, that sort of thing, or the dangerous jumps or whatever comes next. Of course. But, you know, it, it was just downright disgraceful to see this because, you know, I mean, even though they they probably are extras, I'm sure of that, because I know there's six costumes that are on display somewhere and have been on display in probably a Hollywood museum somewhere by now. Because, you know, everything's in a Hollywood museum somewhere. Like, you got the DeLorean from Back to the Future and all that. And I've seen pictures of them online being on display. These were obviously doubles. And you could tell by the Sabertooth Tiger helmet, that was, you know, for that one scene. And what a crying shame that they let this happen. Somebody actually wrote in the comments below that they looked like they were stored in a dumpster. And you know what? He was probably right. That's the sad truth. This person was probably right. They probably were stored in a dumpster. Because the white is yellow on the diamonds, and the helmets are cracked. And of course, you know, layers are cracked and chipped away. Oh, sure, the stuff wasn't necessarily meant to last forever. But, you know, considering how durable they were meant to be for the movie, they should have lasted a lot better than they did. And believe it or not, they're only showing you the best ones. Minus the White Ranger. His is actually a lot better. And they don't show you that because, well, they want to, you know, get your interest with the others. I actually looked up that auction. I'm not kidding. I actually looked it up. And, well, this is what I found. This is just terrible, isn't it? Absolutely terrible. I mean, this is one of the worst things I've ever come across. Because look at how terrible they are. They're in bad shape. Look at the Blue Ranger. His is completely blackened. That's just... That's terrible. I, how could they let this happen? And the gloves are missing, too. That's even worse. And so is his belt. Man, this is just wrong. Absolutely wrong. Oh, and in case you're wondering, pretty much all of them, except for the White Ranger, they didn't sell. They wanted 15 to 20 euros for them. They didn't sell. Only the White Ranger sold. All I can say is, whoever bought them, well, good for you. Because, you know, that was pretty much the best one there. And that's ironic, too, because White Tarnish is worse than anything, you know, that you wear on your body. I mean... If you wear a white shirt, it gets dirty real quick. If you have a white car, well, you know what I'm talking about. It gets real filthy. What gets me is this auction was in London. Once again, everybody's getting dibs to our work except for us anymore. And I mean, it's bad enough that the movies that we make go to Europe and China first and we're dead last. Now they got to sell our stuff too. Let me focus on Pink Ranger here for a minute. Once again, missing belt. And the diamond is like that. This is terrible. Absolutely terrible. This is just sad and painful for me to watch. Now, I've wanted to talk about this for a while because, you know, this is something that everyone needs to know about and see. Now, I'm sure there have been a few people who saw the footage that I just showed you earlier, but... Not everybody got a chance to see the auction itself. Well, you know, what they were displaying here. And, well, here it is. Just great costumes that literally went to hell. Some of them are a little better than others, but, you know, you got separation in Adam's collar. You got missing gloves, missing belts, no morphers. Yellowing in the white areas and... Oh, separations and holes that look like a moth got to it. This is a crying shame. What happened here was just downright criminal. Again, most likely they were probably doubles. Because, you know, like I said, they don't have just one costume. They always have multiple costumes made for your stunt doubles, your actors, and for special shots that are needed. They don't just make one costume and have it work at that. They should have been in a museum. They should not have been in an auction. And more important, they should have taken better care of them. A very sad, crying shame. Let me know what you guys think. This is Movie Fan, signing off.